Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Marvel, starting with The God of Destruction. Chapter 61. What did you say? The God of Destruction showed up. Thor, who was still distracted thinking about how to defeat Angel next time they meet, asked immediately. Well, can't you perceive it? That direction, Yan said to Thor, pointing in the direction of the large Magellanic Cloud. Although Thor is a fool, he is the eldest son of Odin after all, and Odin's current policy towards Asgard is completely in line with Angel's righteous order. Angelian felt the need to give Thor proper respect, even if he's a muggle. Thor focused in that direction. Indeed, it has an indescribable power. That kind of infinite power that is as vast as the power of heaven, even though it is tens of thousands of light years away, it still makes people feel scared. Under such power, the universe will moan because it cannot bear it. Thor couldn't help but feel a sense of surrender coming from the bottom of his heart. What's wrong? Did something happen? Looking at Yan and Thor, whose faces were getting serious, the captain of the United States stepped forward and asked in confusion. Man, sometimes I really envy you. Ignorance may also be a kind of happiness. Thor pretended to be serious, reached out and patted the captain of the United States on the shoulder and spoke earnestly. Ha, huh, what happened? The other Avengers were stunned by Thor's words. Apparently, something earth-shattering happened. Hey, I didn't want to say it originally. Since you ask the question sincerely, then I will. The God of Destruction has appeared. Angel interrupted Thor and said quickly. To be honest, Achai looks down on this Thor Thor. Apart from his identity as the son of Odin, he has no merit whatsoever. Not only is he ugly, but he is also reckless and has no strategy at all. The point is, although his strength is not that great, he has the habit of bragging. As the son of the God King, he shows off his power in front of a group of mortals. There is no consciousness of being a God at all. Ahem, Thor coughed awkwardly after being interrupted. After all, he couldn't fight again and again, so he could only rely on this method to relieve the embarrassment. Fortunately, everyone else was attracted by Angel's words and didn't pay too much attention to him. What is the God of Destruction? Iron Man Tony Stark asked Angel in the spirit of just asking if he didn't understand. Ahem, Thor stood up again, and it was time for him to show his profound knowledge. Let him Thor Thor, the natives of Myrtle, explain this grand universe. However, everyone obviously didn't want to give Thor Thor a chance to show off. Everyone continued to surround Angel Zhui and Angel Yan. After all, Listening to two beautiful angel girls is much better than being surrounded by Thor, a sloppy uncle. The God of Destruction is one of the only six creation level gods in the universe. He has extremely powerful power. The six creation level gods. Do angels and demons count? Tony Stark asked curiously. In his opinion, the demon queen Morgana he heard about some time ago is also a god, maybe on the entire level. My ignorant friends, let me. Thor Thor, explain it to you. Why are we friends? Thor stood up shamelessly. While patting Tony Stark hard on the shoulder, he stared at the Avengers Alliance members who were walking away with vicious eyes. As if to say, if anyone dares not to give Thor Thor face again, don't blame him for being ruthless. There are countless creatures in this universe. They each live on their own planet and have their own lives. The most powerful among them are called gods. These gods are very powerful. Some gods even have a planet with their bare heads. Some gods even have a planet in their bodies. Angel then explained to the Avengers and X-Men. Angel's database contains a wealth of knowledge about the universe, and they don't mind helping ordinary people. The premise is that these people are upholding justice. These gods have invincible power in the eyes of ordinary creatures. Some can even easily destroy planets and create black holes. However, at the true top of the universe, there will always be only five creation-level gods that cannot be surpassed. The five gods, didn't we just say the six creation-level gods? Chin asked Angel in confusion. Haha, there is actually not much emphasis on creation-level gods in the universe. It represents a state, a power that is on par with other gods, a power that is close to invincible. Since ancient times, the universe has been born for tens of billions of years. Among them, only one person has reached that state. Seeing that his line was being robbed, Thor interrupted forcefully. What kind of power is that? Is it stronger than Morgana? Someone asked Thor immediately. As for Thor, 
Maybe he was not very popular in Asgard, but now he really enjoys this feeling of being needed by others. Definitely, it would be better if there weren't these two angels tearing down towers around. Let me tell you, Morgana is very strong. Even among the experts at the level of God King, she is a well-deserved strong one. Even after being hunted by our angel for 10,000 years, she is still alive and kicking. Angelian pulled it casually, sat down in the air, and crossed his legs. Moreover, when you reach Morgana's level, the number of people no longer poses a threat at all. At his level, even the earth can't pose any threat to Morgana. Yanyao pointed at Thor Thor and explained to everyone on earth. The superheroes on earth's eyes twitched when they heard this. Morgana is very strong, but she is still being chased by Angel. Doesn't that mean that Angel is stronger? At least there is a strong man who can chase Morgana throughout the universe. Will the nuclear bomb be useful against Morgana? Tony Stark asked. He wouldn't mind adding some nuclear weapons to his armor if they were useful. After all, this is already the most powerful weapon on Earth. Haha, <laughs> kid, your idea is very novel. I don't know how long it has been. No one in the universe has tried to kill a god with the weapons of pre-nuclear civilization. Angelian couldn't help but be amused by Tony Stark. What's so funny about this? Tony Stark scratched his head and asked in confusion. In his view, nuclear bombs are already the most powerful weapon. Even with his Superman's wisdom, he couldn't think of a boy with a weapon stronger than a nuclear bomb. Ahem. Thor coughed softly. Then he kindly reminded Stark beside him. Let me ask you what you think. If I hit your Mark armor with a fly swatter, would you be injured? Oh, my god, Tony Stark exclaimed. He couldn't imagine that a weapon as powerful as a nuclear bomb could be described as a fly swatter by others. At the same time, it also made these superheroes understand more how powerful the gods are in this universe. How insignificant you are. However, no matter how powerful these gods are, they are just creatures living in the universe. They still cannot transcend the universe. Since the birth of the universe, gods have been replaced one after another. Even the most powerful gods will one day fall. Only the five creation level gods have always existed since the birth of the universe and have never been replaced. At this point, Angelian couldn't help but show a solemn expression. Not to mention the superheroes on Earth, even Thor Thor listened intently. What, you ask Thor, who is the prince of Asgard after all, why he doesn't even know this? Then you have to ask, if Thor has lived for more than a thousand years, can he count the number of times he has been to the library of Asgard on two hands? After all, Asgard does not have a database for Thor to directly extract and use. And these five creation level gods are, Planet Devourer. It is said that he is the only person who survived in the previous universe and feeds on planets with life. What, even if we feed on the planet, there must still be life on it. Natasha Romanoff couldn't help but cover her mouth. She really couldn't imagine what a god who feeds on the planet would look like. Death, the source, operator and creator of all life souls in the universe, can control the life and death of all life, including gods. Oh my god. The Avengers and the X-Men roughly understood what a creation-level god was. Eternity represents the concrete manifestation of the total time of the entire universe, and can manipulate all time, or create time. Infinity represents the concrete phenomenon of the total space of the entire universe, and can easily manipulate all spaces. Annihilation, the concrete phenomenon of multi-universe antimatter can create and manipulate all matter antimatter space in the multi-universe that has no concrete existence form. Quote dot 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 quote. The chins of these superheroes have almost reached the ground. Originally, the planet devourer at the beginning was already difficult to imagine, but I didn't expect that the subsequent ones would be more difficult to understand. None of them are normal creatures at all. Take Tony Stark for example. He racked his brains and couldn't think of any way that a person, or a god, could overcome the entire time or space of the universe. After all, humans have not yet explored the boundaries of the universe. It is no exaggeration to say that the earth is as small as dust in the universe. I still don't understand why. What exactly is a creation-level god? After all, the captain of the United States is an old man from the last century, so he can't understand these novel vocabulary. Captain, this is how you understand it. 
as the one with the highest IQ among the Avengers, and definitely a good friend of the Captain of the United States, Tony Stark took the initiative to step forward to solve the doubts of the Captain of the United States. Take Infinity as an example. The Earth is just a grain of dust on Infinity. Tony Stark feels that he is not exaggerating at all. Compared to the entire universe, the Earth is just a grain of dust. Quote dot 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 quote. The Captain of the United States said he understood now. But it's worse than not being able to understand. Then why do you say there are six gods? Chin really couldn't think of what kind of person could reach such a state. Even God cannot compete with the time, space, or antimatter of the entire universe. The five gods are beyond the scope of living things, okay. How could anyone reach that point? It is precisely because we understand better than others what is the embodiment of space and time. That's why Tony Stark can't believe that someone can reach that point. To put it bluntly, it is to compete with the time or space of the entire universe with one's own strength. How big is the universe? Even God can't explore it all. Yes, as you said, since the birth of our universe, there has never been anyone who can compete with the five gods. In the comics, Eternity died several times, and was resurrected intact after a while. And Eternity is the time embodiment of the entire Marvel multi-universe. If a single universe is killed, it is just a duplication. Strictly speaking, if the Marvel multi-universe is not destroyed, it will not die. Until. Dot the God of Destruction appears. Although Yanmei has never seen the God of Destruction, he can imagine how difficult and shocking it is for a mortal to reach the level of a creation-level god. Even Queen Keisha is completely unable to reach that point. Who is the God of Destruction? Natasha Romanoff asked curiously. She wanted to know what kind of person could reach that point. Not to mention Natasha Romanoff, even Yan couldn't help but yearn for the God of Destruction. Unlike other creation gods, the God of Destruction is not a manifestation but the real God of the universe. And he is the most powerful male god in the universe. Originally, few people knew what the God of Destruction looked like. They didn't even know that there was such a powerful man in the universe. But until a year ago, the battle between the God of Destruction and Eternity allowed many God King level masters to see the power of the God of Destruction. The real look. Queen Keisha once told me that the God of Destruction has blue hair that sticks up, fluorescent blue pupils, a cold but handsome face, and is surrounded by blue aura and starry sky-like particles. Yan described it with a look of reverence in his eyes. Only that kind of male god is worthy of her vow of angel protection. Even Angel Chai beside him couldn't help but show admiration in his eyes. If I had that kind of strength, I could deliver justice in every corner of the universe. However, Angel Zhui knew that he might not be able to achieve that level of strength in this life. It really doesn't work, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was such a male god to stay with us for the rest of our lives and work together for a million years? Angel couldn't help but fall into his own beautiful fantasy. Actually, rather than what the god of destruction looks like, I want to know what the battle between the god of destruction and eternity looks like. Tony Stark continued to ask. In his opinion, his lifespan is only a few decades, and I am afraid he will never meet such a great god in this life. What's the use of knowing looks? Didn't you see that old lady angel, who has lived for 7,000 years, also knows looks, but she hasn't even seen a hair on her face? It's better to listen to how to fight, gain insights, and take the opportunity to find inspiration to enhance your own steel armor. After facing Magneto, Tony Stark already had preliminary ideas for his next armor transformation. Completely abandon metal materials and make them with nanomaterials. Faced with Tony Stark's question, Yan just shook his head lightly. A battle of that level, let alone me. Even Queen Keisha can't watch the battle up close. However, the battle between the God of Destruction and Eternity was so fierce that the entire universe was trembling. Even several galaxies in the core of the battlefield were turned into nothingness. Even though a long time has passed, there is still nothing better than a black hole. Even scarier. Whether it's time or space, it's all invalid wherever it is. Even Queen Keisha doesn't dare to set foot anywhere easily. Yan described to these people that if she knew that the thing really existed, even she would think that she was bragging. Hiss. Everyone gasped. They couldn't believe how one person could fight against the time of the entire universe. So what was the final result? Who among them won? Who was stronger? 
Thor decided that the God of Destruction was his lifelong goal. Thor decided that the God of Destruction was his lifelong goal. Putting aside the results, just challenging the Creator God of the universe as a creature of the universe is a feat that has never been done before or since. In the entire universe, only the God of Destruction has dared to do this so far. I think eternity should be better. Tony Stark crossed his arms and said thoughtfully. Because he really can't think of any way to defeat the time embodiment of the entire multi-universe. Short of destroying the entire multi-universe. I also think eternity is better. Natasha Romanoff also expressed her opinion. After all, eternity has existed since the birth of the universe, and the god of destruction is just a creature born in the universe. There is still some gap after all. No, on the contrary. Thor jumped out again and answered first. I once watched that battle under the protection of my father Wongbi. Because the battle at that time was too terrifying, my father did not dare to get too close and could not see too many details. However, throughout the entire battle, the God of Destruction suppressed Eternity. He even injured Eternity at one point. The God of Destruction can easily break time. Hiss. Break time. How is that possible? What is the concept of breaking time? You know, destroying one second is even 10,000 times more difficult than destroying, here it means destroying, not wasting, the earth. It's unbelievable, but it's true. In the end, if Eternal Sister hadn't stepped forward to break up the fight, I'm afraid there would have been one less god of creation. Thor said with great emotion. Infinite, is it the infinite? If there is no other creation god named infinity in this world, then it is the infinity you are talking about. For a moment, these superheroes immediately imagined a sub-family ethics blockbuster. Brother, sister, and another man. What can happen? Most likely it was a fight between the elder brother-in-law and his brother-in-law, and then the younger sister came out to break up the fight. It seems that even the creator gods are not exempt from vulgarity. However, at the same time, everyone became more curious about what kind of person could break time. What kind of person can defeat the creation god as a living being? Even Angel couldn't help but feel a slight interest in the god of destruction. Even if Vegito didn't use his full strength, there were still many powerful people in the universe who perceived Vegito's power. Not to mention the Kree in front of me. The Kree warships, which were ready to go, adjusted their formation in the shortest possible time. However, the situation changed from being prepared to welcome everyone. Pissed. Liang Bing, who was beside Vegito, looked at the welcoming people in front of him. They even used hundreds of Galaxy-class battleships to display signs that the God of Destruction was coming. I couldn't help but laugh. The speed of this face change is much faster than that of the Demon Queen. Then he covered his mouth as quickly as possible and looked at Vegito cautiously. Seeing that Vegito didn't show any expression, I finally felt relieved. Honorable Lord God of Destruction, I am the supreme wisdom of the Kree people and also the master of the Kree people. Welcome to your arrival. As the supreme wisdom that combines all the wisdom of the Kree people, it is naturally clear that it is impossible to defeat the god of destruction even if it costs the entire empire. Please come with me to the Kree planet. All Kree people welcome your arrival. The supreme wisdom of the Kree people placed their posture very low. After all, the person in front of him is the god of destruction. No need, the Cree people visited Earth more than 10 years ago. I want all the information about the Cree people on Earth. Earth, the supreme intelligence immediately began to search through the stored information in his mind. Sir, I will transfer all the information to you right now. The supreme intelligence is truly the Cree's most advanced computer. Within a moment, all the information was found. It contains all their plans and actions on Earth. Even to be on the safe side, the Supreme Intelligence handed over all the information collected on the Earth thousands of years ago. However, there was no news that Vegito wanted to get. As Vegito frowned, the CPU of the Supreme Intelligence began to tremble. Fearing that the God of Destruction would be dissatisfied, he wiped out all the Kree. Liang Bing, come and take a look. Vegito ordered to Liang Bing behind him. Yes. Liang Bing stepped forward and used the Eye of Insight to read some information about the Supreme Wisdom. Everyone will have their own spiritual power, just more or less. When detecting these people, the psychic power will more or less work to prevent the leakage of one's own privacy. But the Supreme Intelligence is a computer. 
Although it combines the wisdom of all Kree people, it has no psychic power. So Liang Bing is very easy to detect. But then, Liang Bing frowned. It is very easy for Liang Bing to gain insight into the supreme wisdom of the Kree people. That's the truth. Liang Bing can easily explore all the information of the supreme wisdom in the dark plane. This is one of the advantages of living things over non-living things. Regardless of strength, as long as it is a creature in the main universe, it will have spiritual power and a soul. No matter how powerful the machine is, it will not generate its own soul. However, when accessing the Kree Dark Plane data, Liang Bing could clearly feel that some of it seemed to be blocked. As a god, his instinct warns Liang Bing, danger. If she looks any longer, she will die. How is that possible? Even when visiting Kesha's bitcha, this would never happen. Hum. Liang Bing snorted and spit out a mouthful of blood. His face looked a little pale. Definitely, the people who are paler than Liang Bing are the Kree people surrounding here. The supreme wisdom has some difficulties that cannot be explained. He obviously didn't do anything. Why did the good ant across from me suddenly vomit blood? What's wrong? Vegito stretched out his hand to support Liang Bing. Liang Bing leaned weakly into Vegito's arms. Cough, cough. When I was detecting its dark plane information, I felt that a piece of information seemed to have been blocked. When I wanted to delve deeper, there was a sudden and terrifying breath. Locked me in. Liang Bing pointed to the Kree Supreme Wisdom and said to Vegito. That terrifying aura just glanced at me, and it hit me hard. If you weren't by my side, I'm afraid he would have appeared directly and killed me. Liang Bing said to Vegito with lingering fear. Just now, she felt genuine murderous intent. At the same time, Liang Bing also knows that people at that level are probably far beyond what he can deal with. Looking back now, when I was on Earth, there seemed to be some problems with those people's thinking and the dark plane information. During this time, Liang Bing has been killing those people obtained from the shield list for Vegito. Liang Bing's methods can obviously easily play with the minds of people on Earth. It is very easy to torture those people to collapse. However, no useful information was obtained at all. Liang Bing used to directly extract the dark plane information of those on Earth, and did not feel anything unusual. But looking back now, I feel it is very unusual, because before many people died, their expressions were not that they didn't want to say anything, but that they wanted to say that they couldn't. Based on the current situation, those people's dark plane information has clearly been tampered with. Liang Bing, who delivered the news for Vegito, had obviously repeatedly touched that person's taboos. So I have the current warning again. Oh, Liang Bing's strength has almost reached its peak in the entire universe, and there are only a few people who can defeat Liang Bing. Under the influence of Vegito, there seems to be only one person who can change the dark matter plane information at will, and can easily hurt Liang Bing with just one look. That is Annihilation, who is also a creation level god. Annihilation, Vegito muttered, no matter who it is, there is only one way to die. Vegito's momentum began to rise again. My lord, the Kree supreme wisdom said tremblingly. Even with the computer, he could feel the visceral fear. With such power, it would be easy to destroy the entire Kree Empire. Lord God of Destruction, please let the Kree Empire go. The entire Kree Empire, whether it was the Supreme Intelligence or Ronan the Accuser who was commanding the fleet, all the Kree soldiers present, or civilians on distant planets all knelt down towards Vegito. In the face of such power, they couldn't think of any other way out except kneeling down and begging for mercy. For the sake of your sincerity. I will only destroy half of it as a warning. As Vegito finished speaking, a laser shot out from Vegito's fingertips. The Kree Empire is one of the most powerful empires in the universe. With territory spanning more than several galaxies. However, with the stroke of Vegito's finger. Take the Kree home planet as the boundary. The entire Kree Empire, all the new powers and fleets on the left side of the home star, were all turned into powder. Even the Kree's home planet has turned into a half-sphere. With half of the entire Kree Empire disappearing, Vegito and Liang Bing also disappeared. Huhu. With Vegito disappearing, the remaining Kree survivors finally took a deep breath. The pressure the God of Destruction put on them was so strong that all the Kree people did not dare to take a deep breath. Even the God of Destruction destroyed half of the Kree Empire. But the Kree people did not dare to have the slightest intention of revenge. 
Ronin, the supreme wisdom who survived the disaster shouted to Ronin, the surviving accuser. Exist. The Kree Empire suffered heavy losses this time, but fortunately half of us survived. Immigrate everyone from the home planet in the shortest time. The Kree do not have the technology of the Sun Star, and they can use even half of the planet as one. Then transform this planet and build a huge amount of statue of the God of Destruction to commemorate the arrival of the God of Destruction. Yes, Ronan surprisingly did not object to Supreme Wisdom's measures that wasted money and people. The God of Destruction destroyed half of their homeland. Not only did the Kree people not dare to hold grudges, they even built a statue to the God of Destruction. The next time they appear, Vegito and Liang Bing have returned to Vegito's home. Liang Bing was still shocked by this kind of space teleportation across millions of light years, even if he saw it again. Liang Bing could imagine how terrifying energy it would take to calculate a fourth generation divine body like hers to span light years. Not to mention a strong man like Vegito. However, Vegito felt very relaxed, as if there was no consumption at all. Liang Bing, I have to leave for a while. During this period, help me protect Gwen. Vegito passed a burst of his energy to Liang Bing. This energy can not only speed up Liang Bing's recovery from injuries. It can also protect Liang Bing in times of crisis. After saying that, Vegito disappeared. The six creation gods and dragons of the universe are nowhere to be seen. Not even Vegito has seen Annihilation. Let alone how to find Annihilation. However, he can find eternity and infinity. And Vegito intends to find Annihilation through eternity and infinity. The next time he teleports, Vegito is next to eternity and infinity. I saw a very simple house filled with all kinds of unreliable furniture. For example, there is a Vegito-shaped sandbag not far away. And a pair of sisters were lying lazily on the sofa watching something like a TV. Her cheeks are rosy and her eyes are wistful. He looked back and smiled, full of charm. Look forward to it for thousands of dynasties, and your fragrance will last for thousands of years. Look at the moon in the water and explore the bamboos beside the clouds. Look forward to the brilliance and seduce people's hearts. Their looks are indescribably perfect, maybe they are the most beautiful people in the universe. They have exactly the same appearance, except that one has crystal blue hair hanging down to her waist, while the other has golden hair. They have exactly the same appearance, but they reveal completely different temperaments. One is as gentle as jade, while the other is as cold as ice. Ah, Vegito, why are you here? The stunning girl with blue hair is infinite. He stood up immediately when he saw Vegito's arrival. There was a look of joy on her beautiful face. Then he secretly hid a human-shaped pillow in his arms into his own private space as quickly as possible. The human-shaped pillow seemed to have blue hair and blue eyes. HMPH, scumbag. Unlike Infinity, Eternity is obviously not interested in Vegito's arrival, and is even full of opinions. It can be seen that she hung the Vegito version of the sandbag, and she obviously has opinions about Vegito. Who would have thought that Eternity and Infinity are just a pair of otaku siblings? If other people in this universe knew that the creation god they revered turned out to be like this, I don't know how many people's jaws would be shocked. Do you know where Annihilation is? Vegito was obviously not used to Infinite's enthusiasm, so he dodged the Infinite that rushed towards him. Ask the sisters. We don't know where Annihilation is. After all, we haven't contacted each other for a long time. Infinite shook his head and said to Vegito with a cute face. But if it's Vegito, I can go look for it with you. A pure smile appeared on the beautiful face. The beads of Sutra do not move and the two eyebrows are condensed, and the lead is gone, showing the innocence. There is no better word to describe the infinity of this moment. I don't have time to accompany you to find her. Obviously, Yang Gung looked down upon his sister's insincere attitude. However, if you fight with me, no matter what the outcome is, I will help you find annihilation. Obviously, Eternity is very upset about the fact that he almost didn't beat Vegito last time. She, a creator god, was beaten violently by the creatures of the universe under her command. Where did she put her reputation as a creator god? No, this place must be found. She actually made her eldest sister among the gods of creation, Eternity, embarrassed to the whole universe. If she doesn't say this, she won't be able to feel at ease. Eternal thought fiercely but he never thought about whether he had become stronger.
Sorry, I refuse. Vegito refused Eternity without hesitation. After the last battle with Eternity, almost half of the universe was destroyed. How can he be in the mood to continue to be entangled with Eternity now? If it were another time, with Vegito's bellicose personality, he might actually be able to agree to Eternal's request. What? You? Dot you? Eternity pointed at Vegito, so angry that he couldn't speak for a while. I'm in a hurry, let's go, let's go find Annihilation. Vegito shook his head and decisively rejected the Eternal proposal. Then he said to Infinite beside him. Okay, let's go. Infinite stepped forward and took the initiative to hold Vegito's hand. If we talk about space alone, even if Vegito has buggy skills like teleportation, it is completely incomparable to the concrete infinity of the entire universe. Eternity wanted to say something else, but Vegito and Infinity had already left. Hey, wait for me. Yanggang shouted anxiously, then gritted his teeth and chased after him. Then began to curse Vegito in his mind. There is also Infinite. After all, they have lived together for endless years, and now they abandon her so easily. It's simply inhumane to be of the opposite gender, plastic sisterhood. However, despite the scolding, Yanggang chased him out in a very honest manner. Dot 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 On Earth, Gwen was disappointed for a long time when she learned that Vegito had gone away and might not be able to come back for a while. Fortunately, during this period, the relationship between Gwen and Liang Bing got much better. There was no legendary, domestic violence scene. However, what makes Gwen even more unhappy is that in addition to Liang Bing, who she had a hard time accepting, there is another beauty coming to the family. It is Vegito's old classmate, Chin. After helping Professor Charles did not put the piano together, but sighed and said to the piano in a serious voice. Chin, you and Vegito are both my most outstanding students. I have always thought so. But I hope that when you see Vegito, you can give me a message. I know he is very powerful now, but don't continue to investigate, he will be in danger. That matter is not something humans can do. As he spoke, Professor X showed deep fear in his eyes. Even when facing apocalypse, Professor. Yes, Professor. Chin nodded silently, and then left the school where she grew up. From today on, she will start a new life. In Liang Bing's opinion, Chin has the Phoenix Force from the beginning of the universe, so she is qualified to be her sister. So I don't have much opinion about Chin's arrival. Although Gwen was very unhappy, she did not drive Chin away. Because she will not make any decisions for Brother Vegito without authorization. Moreover, Gwen and Jean had met several times when they were young because of Brother Vegito. Chin and Gwen are both kind-hearted people. After getting along for a while, the two of them got along very harmoniously. Liang Bing, on the other hand, has recently fallen in love with shopping. He always drags Gwen and Chin along, euphemistically called protecting them. And Gwen also fully realized that Liang Bing was completely a rich woman. She never looked at the price when buying things, only whether they suit her liking. She has never even seen Liang Bing go to work, so rich. As for herself, she still makes a living by buying photos of Spider-Man for newspapers. Dead Man is simply more popular than anyone else. On this day, Liang Bing once again took Chin and Gwen out for shopping. Liang Bing is just getting excited. Gwen stopped suddenly. What's wrong? Liang Bing and Chin looked at Gwen with concern. I, I feel like something bad is going to happen. Gwen's spider telepathy frantically warned her to stay away from the city. Quick, get out of here. Get out of this city. Gwen shouted anxiously. Want to send Liang Bing and Chin away from New York City. Suddenly, Liang Bing raised his head and looked into the distance. There is a powerful space force erupting in the distance. A beam of light shot straight into the sky from a building in New York. Then a portal slowly opened, and countless battleships swarmed in. Everything in New York began to be destroyed. Let's get out of here first. I'll protect you. Chin stood up. During this period of getting along, Chin also completely recognized the sisters Liang Bing and Gwen. To Jean, Gwen is just an ordinary little girl. As for Liang Bing, Gwen he and Professor. After all, Chin has seen Vegito use teleportation with her own eyes. Even if Liang Bing has some tricks, he can't be her Phoenix Force's opponent. 
So Qin deservedly stood up to protect Gwen and Liang Bing. A bright light shot straight into the sky from the top of the Stark building. The powerful space energy seemed to tear a hole in the sky of New York City. A wormhole exit opens over the city of New York, and constantly expand. It wasn't until the diameter reached tens of kilometers that it stabilized. The entire sky also became gloomy. Countless alien fleets roared out of the wormhole. In a few moments, the entire sky of New York City was covered. Roar. Immediately afterwards, a ship of steel monsters emerged from the wormhole. Thousands of meters of monsters and countless aliens rushed down in all kinds of weird spacecraft and warships. From a distance, it looked like a black rainstorm was falling from the sky. Densely packed aliens rushed down overwhelmingly. Ah, help! Suddenly, the entire city was filled with screams, howls, and cries. The whole city is filled with despair, fear and silence. The foreigners have invaded, who will save us? Where are our troops? Where are the police? Why aren't they here yet? Run, I don't want to die yet. The Karita people emerged from the wormhole and began to massacre the humans on the ground unscrupulously. Countless people were pierced by energy guns and died before they even had time to react. Some people were turned into ashes directly under the Kirita people's main ship cannon. Suddenly, disasters are happening constantly. The culprit of all this was standing on the roof of the Stark building, watching all of this proudly, as if all of this was not a disaster, but his masterpiece. He picked up the wine glass in his hand and filled himself with a glass of red wine. I am God, you should all worship me. Fear me. Loki opened his arms as if to embrace the sky, with an expression of enjoyment on his face. He liked this feeling of being able to control countless lives and deaths. However, Loki obviously did not enjoy this feeling of dominating the world for long. The Avengers appeared here. Behind Loki, Hawkeye raised the arrow in his hand towards his former teammates. Loki, hand over the Tesseract. Rogers, the captain of the United States, led the Avengers and appeared in front of Loki. Loki, come with me back to God's realm to accept punishment. Thor also stood up and said to Loki seriously. Brother, you didn't think so when you exiled me to the universe. Loki said disdainfully. All of this was caused by Loki. After he was exiled by Thor, he met Thanos by chance. He promised to help Thanos collect an infinite gems, and Thanos would support him to become the new king of Asgard. Even in order for him to complete all this, Thanos gave him the psychic scepter. But now, the Karita army has arrived. With the force of the earth, there is almost no possibility of victory. Everything seems to be a sure win. Even Loki couldn't help but drift off a little more. At the moment when Loki was most relaxed, Tony Stark rushed out from the side and reached out to snatch the psychic scepter from Loki's hand. After all, Hawkeye Clinton and Dr. Selwiger are still controlled by Loki. But, who is Loki, the god of cunning and treachery? He has always been the only one who can trick others. What's more, he is a god, so it is possible for him to be tricked by a mortal. Loki backhand thrust his mind scepter into Tony Stark's chest. Submit to me. The corners of Loki's mouth raised slightly, as if he had everything under control. Boom. Reality. No, it was Iron Man who punched him in the face. All of a sudden Loki was knocked away. Is that possible? How could you not be controlled by me? Loki shouted in surprise. Not even Loki himself can say that he can resist the psychic scepter's divine power. A mortal, why should he? Then I have to ask about the toy in your hand. Tony Stark said disdainfully, and planned to continue to teach Loki a lesson. Ha ha ha. Naturally, Loki would not fight these people stupidly, after all, his brother was still on the opposite side. When it came to a fight, Loki didn't think he could beat Thor. But war is never about personal force. My Yuchuan brother, enjoy all this. Clearly, Loki wasn't going to take it easy. Instead, it turned into a phantom and slowly disappeared in place. We have to stop the portal. Seeing the steady stream of Karita troops pouring into the earth, Natasha Romanoff shouted anxiously. Let me. Thor stood up. After all, he was his younger brother, so he still had to take the initiative to take some responsibilities. He picked up the hammer in his hand and spun it quickly. Then he struck hard at the light beam that opened the portal. Boom. A deafening sound came out. Even the whole building was shaking violently. 
Even Thor himself took two steps back unsteadily. Thor Thor felt some numbness in his arm, but the light beam produced by the Tesseract was not affected at all. The wormhole is still open stably. Ha ha ha, my stupid brother. At this time, Loki's disappearing phantom obviously would not miss any opportunity to taunt Thor. You shut up. Thor was obviously really angry, or maybe he felt a little embarrassed because he, the mighty Thor, couldn't even handle a small beam of light. Thor raised Mjolnir again. For a moment, the whole sky was filled with lightning and thunder. Even Thor's eyes began to sparkle with lightning. With this strike, Thor used his strongest power with thunderous power. Roar. With a loud roar, accompanied by lightning and thunder, Thor jumped up violently and plummeted from the sky. Boom, boom, powerful air waves shook the entire Stark building. Huge amounts of roaring sound even shook the surrounding people until their ears were ringing. In the roar of huge amounts, everyone even saw something being smashed away and crashing into a giant warship of the Karita people. Boom, the seemingly powerful battleship was suddenly smashed to pieces like paper. It's enough to show the power Thor used this time. Well done, Brother Hammer. The captain of the United States waved his fist fiercely. He could feel that Thor's power was definitely not weaker than a mountain falling from the sky. However, the outcome of the matter did not turn out as everyone expected. When the smoke cleared, Thor was seen lying on the ground completely invisible. The Mjolnir in his hand has long disappeared. The Tesseract, however, still had no effect at all. Well, I think I might not be his match. Thor slowly became afraid. The right hand holding the hammer trembled slightly. It doesn't matter, since we can't close the time and space gate, the top priority is to catch Loki first and save the people of the United States. Rogers, the captain of the United States, comforted. Now, those alien armies have begun to massacre ordinary citizens of the United States. At this time, a superhero must stand up. Let's go. Avengers, assemble. Let's get out of here. Jean casually destroyed a Karita warship flying towards them. Then he turned around anxiously and said to Liang Bing and Gwen. No, Sister Chin, I want to stay and protect them. You can take Sister Liang Bing away first. At this point, Gwen no longer bothered to hide her identity and confessed directly to Liang Bing and Chin. Sister Liang Bing, Sister Chin, actually, I am Spider Woman. Gwen said as she took out her spider tights from her backpack. You guys leave here first. I'm going to help them. Gwen's sense of justice did not allow Gwen to retreat at this moment. Good tutoring helped Gwen develop a good habit of helping others. At the same time, she also knows that with greater ability comes greater responsibility. Gwen, Chin has also been taught by Professor X since childhood. She is kind-hearted and wants to protect the ordinary people around her. However, Chin knew that what she wanted to protect now was Liang Bing and Gwen. If you are worried about me, then there is no need. Liang Bing said very nonchalantly. Actually, I'm better than you. He casually put the shopping bag in his hand into his own micro space. Okay, now do what you always wanted to do. Liang Bing has no intention of helping these New Yorkers. Years of experience in the universe have long made her look down on life and death. Except for the people he cares about, Liang Bing doesn't care about the life or death of others at all. Moreover, this invasion of the Chiridans is viewed by the Earth as an epic war of alien invasion. But in Liang Bing's view, it was just two backward civilizations fighting with local weapons, and he had no desire to participate. What's more, Angel is still on Earth. I don't know when Kesha's bitcha will come. She just needs to be responsible for the safety of Gwen and Chin. As for protecting and helping others, the queen said she doesn't have the time to spare. Quote dot 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 quote. Gwen expressed in her Alexander. I originally thought that my martial arts was at least stronger than Liang Bing's, but Liang Bing still gave in to me as a romantic person. Sure enough, compared with Liang Bing, she really has no advantages. Gwen couldn't help but shed tears of sadness again. Okay, now go do what you want to do. Liang Bing patted Gwen and Chin's shoulders and disappeared. Help, help, help me, help mom. A little girl was crying and squatting on the street. An adult woman was pressed under a big stone next to her. No longer breathing. The little girl gently held her mother's hand. He kept crying. Around us, the bustling city of the past is no longer visible, with broken limbs everywhere, with collapsed buildings. 
boom, boom, there are still countless monsters passing through wormholes and coming to the earth. The earth is shaking and the city is wailing. Boom. A bright light attack hit a tall building. A deafening sound came from around me. A huge amount of stone fell from a height of a hundred meters. And right below was the little girl who was crying. The little girl kept wiping her tears and wanted to wake up her, sleeping, mother, but she didn't notice the falling stone at all. Careful, Gwen rushed over as fast as she could, ignoring spider telepathy's crazy warning and protecting the little girl without hesitation. Huge amounts of black shadow enveloped Gwen. Boom. There was a loud noise, and Gwen raised her hands and successfully stopped the falling rocks. The place where the palm came into contact with the stone was dented, and cracks like spider webs spread out. Spread around. Sister. Sister. The little girl seemed to be frightened and stammered. Little sister, don't be afraid, can you go out first? Carrying a stone that is ten times the file size of her body, coupled with the impact of the sinking just now, is obviously not easy for Gwen. However, Gwen immediately said to the little girl. He didn't notice his injuries at all. You know, a bottle cap dropped from a height of hundreds of meters can hit dead man, let alone a stone weighing several thousand kilograms. But, but mom is still down there. The little girl continued to hold her mother's hand, but did not notice at all that her mother's hand was gradually becoming cold. Sister, have I lost my mother forever? The little girl opened her eyes wide and looked at Gwen with tears in her eyes. Quote dot 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 quote. Gwen was silent. Such a young child lost the protection of her parents in this disaster. Can she really survive? Normally, Gwen wouldn't mind helping the little girl rescue her mother from under the rock. But now, her wrist is almost numb. The impact just now even dislocated one of Gwen's wrists, and the other one was not much better. Drink. Gwen held up the stone with all her strength, threw it upwards, then picked up the little girl in her arms as quickly as possible and hid away. Boom. Woo. Mom. Woo. Mom. As the stone fell, the little girl's cry sounded again. Sorry, little sister, I couldn't help you rescue your mother. Gwen gently wiped away the tears of the little sister in front of her. She blamed herself a little. If he could have come earlier, maybe the lovely child in front of him would not have lost his mother. Even Gwen's eyes under the mask became moist unconsciously. Sister, I want a mother. Ellie no longer has a mother. The little girl lay in Gwen's arms, crying sadly. Don't worry, sister will definitely protect you. Gwen patted the little girl's back gently. Then he comforted softly. Spider-Man, let that girl go. At this time, a discordant sound came. A pair of police officers sensed the scene. The leader was none other than Gwen's father, Sheriff George. Sheriff George apparently has no idea that Spider-Woman is his daughter Gwen. Also, he clearly doesn't have any fond feelings for superheroes similar to Spider-Woman. What the media calls a good neighbor in New York City, in his eyes, is a real outlaw. He had even picked up the gun and pointed it at Gwen. Little sister, go over there. The police will protect you. Gwen patted the little girl's back softly. Gwen definitely knew her father's attitude towards Spider-Woman. For this reason, she even had more than one fight with Sheriff George at home. Well, thank you sister. The little girl obeyed Gwen's instructions and trotted all the way to the police. Seeing the little girl hiding safely behind the police, Gwen waved to the little girl and planned to leave and continue to rescue others. Wait a minute, you stay too. However, something strange happened again, and Sheriff George said to Gwen with a serious face. Chapter 71 Ha, huh, Gwen obviously didn't expect that Chief George would stop her at this time. But, there are still many people who need my help. Gwen lowered his head. He had given so much, but could not get his father's understanding. Gwen felt a little aggrieved. Helping others is what the police should do. You should take care of yourself first. Looking at the spider woman in front of her, one of her wrists has been dislocated, but she still insists on protecting others. Even the harsh Chief George's tone couldn't help but become gentle. Medical team, help this girl look at her hands. Chief George turned and shouted to the medical police officer behind him. Judging from the girl's figure and voice, she should be about the same age as his daughter. Suddenly, Sheriff George's senses about Spider-Woman improved to a new level again. Gwen was obviously not used to being stared at by Chief George with a gentle expression. 
You know, under Gwen's influence, Sheriff George has always claimed that Spider-Woman is an outlaw. Sooner or later she will be caught and brought to justice. If she is really caught and brought to justice by her father now, then the problem will be huge. However, Gwen ultimately did not refuse Sheriff George's kindness. He exposed his wrist and gave it to a police officer from the medical team for treatment. Look at Gwen's white wrists and fashionable shoes. Chief George's years of criminal police experience told him that the girl in front of him was definitely not old. Wait a minute, shoe. Sheriff George happened to notice that Spider-Woman's shoes seemed to be exactly the same as the shoes Gwen had been wearing recently. Then look at Spider-Woman's wrist. Her skin color is also unique to Gwen's. For a moment, Sheriff George frowned. He seemed to have discovered something extraordinary. Thinking about it again, Gwen did often quarrel with him over the issue of Spider-Woman. At that time, she just thought that her daughter was chasing stars. Now it seems that it is not that simple. Okay, thank you, then I'm going to help others. After some simple treatment on Gwen's wrist, he stood up and said with a relaxed expression. Gwen, suddenly, Sheriff George called to Spider-Woman. Ah, in desperation, Gwen even revealed her true identity. Mr. Sheriff, what are you talking about? Gwen disguised her voice immediately, trying to get away with it. It's okay, how could he not recognize his daughter's voice? Sheriff George opened his mouth to say something, but when the words came to his lips, he didn't know how to speak. If nothing happens, I'm going to help others first, Gwen said tentatively. Go for it, if that's your choice, Sheriff George shook his head helplessly. Remember, with great ability comes great responsibility. Sheriff George blessed Spider-Woman. Well, thank you, Sheriff, you're a good man. With that, Gwen shot the cobweb out of her hand and left the spot. Also, daughter, you must protect yourself. If those words just now were what Chief George said to Spider-Woman. So now, it is a father's instructions to his daughter. Unfortunately, Gwen has gone far. After Spider-Woman left, Chief George also began to actively organize the police force to start rescue operations. In the sky, Iron Man fires lasers from his palms. The extremely lethal laser penetrated one Chidori soldier after another. The commander of the Chidori army may have noticed that ordinary soldiers no longer pose a threat to Iron Man. A leviathan beast rushed straight towards Iron Man. The file-sized monster, which is several kilometers long, blocks the sun above Iron Man. Ow! Just by looking at the size, he knew that the big monster in front of him was obviously not something he could deal with. Thor, are you free? I have a big monster here and need support. Tony Stark immediately called using the Avengers, internal voice. I, I'm a little busy right now. As Thor spoke, he slammed the hammer in his hand at the alien in front of him. The Chidori surrounding Thor are worse than the aliens attacking Iron Man. What about Hulk? Tony Stark continued to ask. Oh, to be honest, I'm not sure whether Hulk can deal with such a big monster. Dr. Banner apparently also saw the giant beast chasing Iron Man in the sky. But you can give it a try. Brother, you have to do it now if you can't. Tony Stark said that he could hardly hold on any longer. Okay, let it to me. Here you go, my man. Tony Stark operated his steel armor and flew towards Dr. Banner's position. Roar. Dr. Banner began to grow larger and greener. Just at this time, Iron Man also felt the Leviathan Beast behind him. The Hulk rushed forward and ran into the Leviathan Beast, which was huge amounts different in size from him. Rumble, roar, with a roar, the Hulk dragged down the Leviathan Beast that was hundreds of times larger than him. Well done, Hulk, Tony Stark exclaimed from behind. At the same time, I express my heartfelt emotion for Hulk's power. Hulk grinned at Stark, as if in mockery. His power is much more than that. Roar, Hulk began to walk forward step by step, his eyes fixed on the Leviathan Beast. Who, who, with a roar, the Leviathan Beast began to be pushed back step by step by Hulk. Huge amounts of power began to squeeze and collapse the middle part of the Leviathan Beast. On the other side, Gwen and Chin were also able to deal with these Chidori and rescue ordinary people. Hi. Girls, do you want to join the Avengers? On the way to rescue the people, the captain of the United States met Gwen and Jean. I've met Jean Rogers last time, but this is the first time I've met Spider-Woman, captain of the United States. 
I had only heard that the other party was a good neighbor in New York City. Several people even worked together to save many ordinary people. After getting along for a while, the captain of the United States felt that the other person should be the same type of person as himself. Strong, brave, and kind. What ultimately matters is having power. Become their teammates. Forget it. I don't want to be a superhero anymore. Chin shook her head and directly rejected Roger's proposal. Indeed, compared to becoming a superhero, what she wants to do most now is to be an ordinary woman, staying by Vegito's side and giving birth to children for him. Stay with him for the rest of your life. Uncle, let's solve the current trouble first. Gwen's ethereal voice came. Boom, Cobweb pulled a Chidori flight battleship and crashed into another flight battleship. Rogers smiled and shook his head helplessly. He didn't have a big problem with Gwen calling him uncle when he arrived. After all, speaking of real age, Rogers is probably more than a little older than them. What's more, in the current battle, Rogers can only clean up the Chidori on the ground and the aliens flying at low altitude. The roles played by Chin and Gwen are obviously not comparable to Rogers. Boom, 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 there were bursts of explosions. Iron Man raised his hands, and the lasers fired from his palms began to clean up the surrounding Chidori. Roar, Hulk roared as he smashed away a Chidori's warship. Thor Thor also fell from the sky and landed next to everyone. The Avengers assemble again, definitely Jean and Gwen. With everyone joining forces, the surrounding Chidori began to be constantly cleaned up. These Chiridans are not invincible, and even their weapons are not much more advanced than those on Earth. Even ordinary police guns can cause effective damage to Chidori. However, the expressions on everyone's faces became more and more solemn. Because there are still endless aliens and alien battleships constantly pouring out of the wormhole. And it was dozens of times more powerful than the time they wiped out the Chidori. The aliens did not decrease with their efforts in fighting, but instead constantly increased. So much that it's despairing. Everyone's faces gradually became ugly. However, no matter how many opponents there are, they will never back down because they are superheroes. Guys, I have some bad news for you. At this time, Nick Fury's voice came from the Avengers' internal voice channel. A military fighter jet is carrying a nuclear bomb and is heading towards New York. It will arrive in New York in about five minutes. Nick Fury continued, the news may be heavy, but these superheroes deserve to know the truth. Nuclear bomb, are they crazy? Natasha Romanoff responded first. Once the nuclear bomb is dropped, the entire city of New York will be reduced to rubble. Almost no one survives, including them. I'm sorry, I tried my best to stop it, but it's no use. Nick Fury continued to say to the Avengers. For a moment, the entire Avengers turned pale. What's wrong? What happened? Gwen obviously noticed something was wrong with the Avengers Alliance people around him and asked. There is a military fighter jet, carrying a nuclear bomb, flying towards us. It will arrive in about five, no, three minutes. Rogers said to Gwen and Chin with a serious look on his face. What? Gwen immediately exclaimed, knowing that her family are all in this city. How could they do this? Anyone who has been working hard on the front line would probably be heartbroken to learn that he has become an outcast. The feeling of betrayal may not be that good even for the captain of the United States who is loyal to the United States. There was also a burst of resentment. You mean, we were abandoned? Tony Stark asked uncertainly. How dare they? This is the population of a city. Then, Tony roared desperately. I'm very sorry. People in Congress said that New York can be destroyed, but it must not fall. Otherwise, it will not be a city that is in crisis, but the entire United States and the entire Earth. Nick Fury once again explained to the Avengers. Ha, huh, what's the use of them launching nuclear bombs? As long as the portal is not closed, the nuclear bombs can only blow up ourselves. Quote dot 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 quote. Nick Fury definitely knew that Tony Stark was telling the truth, but he had no choice but to persuade those in Congress. Oh, your ruler is really fish-lipped. Obviously, Thor was also angry. Those politicians didn't take their superhero's life seriously at all. In Asgard, a warrior's life is the most noble. There is also absolute unity among the soldiers. There will never be such a thing as being abandoned by one's own people. Even if he loses, he will not abandon his robe. 
They fought hard on the front line, but were mercilessly abandoned by the politicians. Oops, my father is still in the city. Gwen shouted anxiously. We only have less than three minutes now. Even we ourselves may not be able to escape New York City in such a short period of time. The captain of the United States said with some disappointment. Let alone not being able to escape, even if he could escape, how could he, the captain of the United States, be a deserter? So, we must organize nuclear bombs to explode in the city. Tony Stark said firmly. In this city of New York, there are also people he loves the most. But, how should we stop it? Thor Thor asked. He is different, he is the crown prince of Asgard and cannot accompany some earthlings to death. For now, the best he can come up with is to activate the Bifrost and send them all away. But even Bifrost couldn't send all the citizens of New York away. At most I can only take a few of them superheroes away. See that wormhole, Tony Stark's mind was racing, thinking of all possible solutions. You guys will cover me later, and I'll send the nuclear bomb into the black hole. This will protect the city and destroy the aliens at the same time. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Tony Stark pointed to the wormhole where alien fleets were constantly pouring in, and told the superheroes his method. I think it's feasible, Rogers, the captain of the United States, agreed. This is our only option. Oh, I think I'm crazy, Thor said, his majestic Odin eldest son actually wants to fight with these earthlings, okay. Who made them friends? Get started, let's clear the sky first. Tony Stark began to direct the operation. Let me, Chin mobilized the Phoenix Force with all her strength. Boom, a Phoenix Flame soared into the sky. Some Chitori were burned to ashes before they even had time to react. Not even the battleship or the Leviathan Beast could withstand it for a moment before being reduced to ashes in the flames of the Phoenix. Gulu, the Avengers never expected that the seemingly frail Chin could have such power. Even Gwen looked at Chin with a resentful look. I originally thought that I was the most powerful among the girls around Brother Vegito. But, I didn't expect. Even if Sister Liang Bing hides deeply, even Chin is much better than herself. Ha. Dot ha. Chin Ji Yu gasped, that moment just now was the limit of what she could activate the Phoenix Force. Fortunately, the effect is also very obvious. A large area of space has been cleared in the sky. Chitori, which was densely packed just now, is now much less dense. I saw it. Iron Man flew directly towards the fighter jet in the distance. He wants to stop the nuclear bomb and prevent it from exploding in the city. The steel armor moved forward at full speed, and the military fighter jets in the distance had already dropped their nuclear bombs and started to return. Come on Tony. Everyone in the Avengers prayed for Iron Man in their hearts. Iron Man hugged the nuclear bomb tightly, and then flew upwards with all his strength. Thor, clear a path for me, Tony Stark growled. Clear, Thor waved Mjolnir in his hand and flew upwards. Swing the hammer and protect Tony Stark. The closer we get to the wormhole entrance, the more aliens there are. As the aliens became increasingly dense, Thor's movement speed also slowed down significantly. But the nuclear bomb can't slow down. Thor is also aware of the emergency situation. Yeah, Thor yelled, spinning Mjolnir in his hand desperately. Terrifying lightning spread from Mjolnir. For a moment, the whole sky was filled with lightning and thunder. Countless thunder and lightning bombarded the densely packed Chitori. Those who weren't killed by the thunder and lightning were just smashed away by the hammer. It really didn't work. Even if Thor resisted with his physical body, he didn't let these soldiers affect Tony Stark. Finally, at the last moment, Thor clears a path for Tony Stark. Ah, a bowl of file-sized lightning struck at the entrance of the wormhole. For a moment, the wormhole seemed to shut down, and no more Chitori troops emerged. And Iron Man, taking advantage of the moment, successfully passed through the wormhole with the nuclear bomb. Came to the other end of the wormhole. Nice, the plan is successful. On the ground, the captain of the United States and others shouted excitedly. Their plan worked, and nuclear bombs would no longer explode in New York. Even Gwen couldn't help but smile. However, Tony Stark couldn't be happier after passing through the wormhole. Instead, I can only feel endless despair. Tony Stark struggled to push the nuclear bomb in his arms forward. Then it falls back into the wormhole by the reaction force. His steel armor no longer had a trace of energy. 
Now, he can only fall by free fall. He saw a boundless army, and the nuclear bomb exploded, but it only destroyed less than one-tenth, no, one percent of the opponent's army. Can they really defeat each other? With such a large number of legions, no matter how many Avengers they are, they can't kill them all. Before he knew it, Stark had fallen back to Earth. Thor caught him, and the Chitauri above the Earth had been almost cleared. Everyone was cheering, and the media had even turned their cameras on them. Even his teammates had heartfelt smiles on their faces. Tony, we won. You are a hero. Rogers stepped forward and patted Tony Stark's shoulder happily. No, we lost, Tony Stark said in a daze. The space-time wormhole was not closed, and the nuclear bomb only destroyed the army near the wormhole. Soon, more and more powerful aliens would come to the Earth. At that time, let alone relying on them Avengers, even if the power of the entire Earth is gathered, it will have no effect at all. Didn't the nuclear bomb explode in space? Natasha Romanoff asked doubtfully. He didn't understand why Tony was still so negative even though he had already won. No, the nuclear bomb exploded and destroyed countless alien fleets, Tony Stark said, shaking his head. However, the nuclear bomb only destroyed less than 1% of the fleet. Do you know what I saw? The densely packed fleet is like a bug. The entire universe is their fleet. Tony Stark described everything he saw. Those fleets are so densely packed that they occupy a space the size of a file in the solar system. As long as the wormhole remains open, it is impossible for the Earth to hold on. It is impossible for us to win. Tony Stark said desperately, sure enough, as if to prove that what Tony Stark said was true, more troops began to pass through the wormhole and come to the Earth. More and stronger troops than before have arrived. Countless Chidori troops covered the sky, and the entire city of New York seemed dark. Dead silence and despair enveloped the entire city. Even superheroes can't help but feel a little lost, let alone ordinary people. It's over. We're all going to die. The Earth is over, Tony Stark said desperately. His energy has been exhausted. Even if it had not been exhausted, it would be completely impossible for him to be an opponent of so many aliens. Look, what is that? Suddenly, someone shouted, and everyone immediately looked up. The beam of light emitted by the Tesseract began to become unstable. It started to become intermittent. What's going on? The space energy emitted by the Tesseract has become unstable. After this abnormality lasted for a while, the light beam gradually disappeared. And then, the wormhole in the sky completely disappeared. Great, we're saved, Rogers shouted happily. As long as there is no endless army as backup, they will be able to eliminate the aliens on the Earth sooner or later. They already have hope of victory. But, what's going on? Why did the Tesseract suddenly shut down? Thor didn't believe it. He tried his best to hit the Tesseract constantly. If it malfunctioned, it must be controlled by someone. I, I always have a bad feeling. Gwen's spider telepathy started to attack again. Even more intense than when the Chidori army invaded just now. In the distance, on the roof of a certain building, Liang Bing was standing on it, looking thoughtfully at the disappearing wormhole on the horizon. Carl, this loser, what on earth are you doing? When the wormhole was just closed, Liang Bing felt a hint of the big clock. Only the big clock could control the Tesseract at a distance of tens of millions of light years. Boom, an even brighter beam of light emitted from the Tesseract, piercing the sky. Huge amounts of energy light shot straight into the sky, as if tearing a hole in the sky. Huge amounts of energy converged over the city of New York. A new wormhole slowly opened. Compared with the previous wormhole, this one is larger and more terrifying. That section of the wormhole was pitch black, with no starlight visible at all. It was like hell, desolate and dead. Buzz. Huge amounts of sound came from the cave entrance. A cross-shaped starship slowly sailed out of the hole. There are countless small frigates around. Boom. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Boom. The Chidori fleet blocking the positional fleet bore the brunt and was attacked. Chidori's fleet also began to fight back immediately, but in front of the newly appeared fleet, it was still being destroyed like a torrent. In front of the newly arrived fleet, the Karita Legion fleet was completely like meeting a real flight aircraft carrier on a flying motorcycle, not on the same level at all. Anyone can see it. The Chitori fleet was pinned down by fire. 
Countless artillery fire and lasers were fired at the Corita Legion fleet from the newly arrived fleet. The bright rays are dazzling. A fleet of 15 Chidori was destroyed. Chidori's artillery fire hit the light energy shield of the cross fleet. The main ship cannot be damaged at all. What technology is that? Tony Stark on the ground was lost in thought as he looked at the light energy barriers that lit up around the battleship in the sky. That's, that's the Teodi Legion. Thor finally remembered that the Legion in front of him was that force in the universe. The Teodi Legion. What is that? Why is he helping us? Someone immediately asked in confusion. As soon as the Teodi Legion appeared, they took great action against Chitori. In the eyes of these superheroes, the enemy of their enemy is their friend. No, I'm afraid they have never thought of helping us. Thor shook his head. Teodi originated from the Styx galaxy, where there is a god, death god Karl. Karl worships death, and the civilization under his command is also proud of creating death. And the gluttonous army of the Styx galaxy will continue to create death to please their gods even internally. Not to mention the invitation to invade from the outside. Wherever the Teodi Legion passes, they will cause massacres to please their gods. Thor explained to the people around him. As Thor finished speaking, everyone present began to look heavy. What you mean is that if the Chitori invaded the Earth just now for some other purpose, then the current Teodi Legion invades the Earth purely for killing. Tony Stark looked thoughtful and asked Thor. If nothing else happens, it will probably look like this. Thor nodded and responded to Stark's question. As everyone talks, the battle in the sky has reached a fever pitch. With no backup, Chitori was defeated steadily by the Teodi army. Even Chitori's intelligence was not very high, but he could see that they could not win this battle. All the Chitori have begun to retreat, and they are withdrawing towards the outer space of the earth. However, the fleet of the Teodi Legion did not pursue it. Instead, it stopped where it was. Boom, just when everyone was wondering why the Teodi army didn't kill them all. There was a deafening sound. In an instant, a searing star destroyer cannon was fired from the cross of the Teodi main ship, blasting towards the remaining Chitori fleet. The atmosphere is torn apart. The remaining Chitori fleet was burned to death in the blazing light, leaving no room or chance for resistance. An indescribable scene, a doomsday-like scene enveloped the earth. On the ground, everyone looked up at this scene. Civilians, media people, and superheroes. Such power is no less powerful than a nuclear bomb explosion. If the Star Destroyer cannon had hit the ground just now, they simply couldn't imagine what would happen. Is this, is this really what technology can achieve? Tony Stark said with a dry throat. The light energy barrier that the Chitori main ship's laser could not defeat, as well as the Star Destroyer cannon just struck. Stark sees no hope for their victory, nor for Earth's victory. Could it be that the Earth can only be reduced to a killing place created by this gluttonous civilization to please their gods? For a time, all superheroes fell into despair again. The gluttonous army that defeated Chidori did not leave as the people of Earth prayed. Instead, it began to slowly drive towards the surface. The desperate thing didn't end there. Another Teodi main ship flew out of the wormhole just like the one just now. Start sailing to Earth. Dot 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 dot. A total of seven Teodi main ships, carrying countless small ships, flew out of the wormhole. You know, just one Teodi main ship defeated all the Chitori that came to the Earth. But now, there are seven ships in total. How can they defeat each other alone? Even Thor Thor couldn't see that Earth had the slightest chance of winning. Such a disaster is no longer something Earth, a civilization that has just begun to explore the planet, can handle. They see nothing but despair. Now, the Chitori have all been wiped out, but the skies above New York City have been reoccupied. It is true that technology is more advanced and weapons are more powerful by huge amounts of the Teodi Legion. Hey, hey, hey. Don't despair yet. Our army has arrived in New York City. You are responsible for supporting our army and defeating these aliens. Army, yes, we still have an army. In the distance, a group of fighter jets was approaching at a speed visible to the naked eye. Started to pass by Teodi. It's useless. The battle fleets of pre-nuclear civilizations are far from comparable to the Teodi, whether it is firepower, defense, or flexibility. Thor shook his head. He obviously doesn't believe that Earth's military power alone can defeat Teodi. Boom, 
The battle has ended before it even started. Earth's technology missiles, like the Chitori, are completely unable to cause harm to the Teoti fleet. They were shot down one after another. Some fighter jets even crashed after just hitting the light energy barrier of the Teoti main ship. Boom! Under the cover of friendly forces, a fighter jet crashed into the light energy barrier of the Teoti main ship without hesitation. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. A deafening sound came from the horizon. A mushroom cloud of huge amounts appeared on the horizon. Gulu, did they use a nuclear bomb? Even from an altitude of tens of thousands of meters, people on the ground can clearly feel the power of a nuclear bomb explosion. The earth is trembling. The smoke cleared. The next scene made everyone present look shocked. They stared blankly at the horizon. This. Dot how is this possible? The most powerful weapon on earth only destroyed some small fleets around the Teoti Legion. However, the Teoti main ship at the core of the explosion was not affected by Shisi. The huge amounts of cross-like battleship in the sky seemed invincible. Established in the hearts of all people on earth. The Teoti Legion also began to show its fangs to the earth. The artillery fire all over the sky fell like raindrops. The entire city was reduced to rubble under gunfire. Everyone is desperate. The alien fleet in front of us can no longer be solved by the earth alone. At this moment, three streaks of light in the distance cut across the sky, heading here at extremely fast speeds. Cut through this hazy sky. Gave everyone a glimmer of hope. What are you? Someone immediately pointed at the three figures flying in the distance. Angel. As the figure gradually approached, someone immediately exclaimed. As they got closer, a figure was covered in lightning and flew towards a Teoti main ship at lightning speed. Rumble. There was a burst of explosions. Even the Teoti main ship, which was not damaged at all by the nuclear bomb just now, was sunk like this. Oh my god. Angel. I saw a living angel. God bless. She must have come to us. During the disaster, the angels broke through the void and arrived. Countless people seemed to see hope, and countless people cheered crazily. The earth was saved again. These three figures are none other than Angel Yan, Angel Chai, and Angel Mwa, who is guarding the area not far from here and came to earth in advance to greet Queen Kessa. Oh my god, they are so beautiful, countless people exclaimed. One after another, media people and reporters all focused their cameras on Angel in the sky. Suddenly, Angel's appearance caused a stir on the internet. They are so beautiful, I want to marry an angel. Squirt him with yellow urine to wake him up. My urine is yellow, let me come. No, you have diabetes, so you can't let him enjoy the benefits. Even superheroes are beginning to rejoice in Angel's arrival. In fact, when they first met Angel Yan, the Avengers actually refused. Because Angel is too arrogant, even if they represent justice. Everyone in the Avengers Alliance also rejected Angel's kindness on behalf of the Earth. But later on, Angel was still needed to survive the crises one after another. Even recalling it now, everyone in the Avengers still feels a little blushing. Fortunately, we still have Angel. Rogers lay on the ground and said with a contented look on his face. Yes, we still have Angel, Tony Stark also said very happily. Fortunately, Angel came to Earth. Otherwise, they really don't know how to survive this disaster. Ajwe, Mo Yi, you unite to deal with one of the Teoti main ships, and I will deal with the other one. Fight quickly and protect ordinary people as much as possible. Angel Yan ordered Angel Zhui and Angel Mo Yi behind him. Then he took the lead and rushed towards a Teoti main ship. The whole world is watching this battle. Three angels faced off against the gluttonous army. And it carries a super weapon comparable to a nuclear bomb. Can they really win? Everyone is sweating for the angels, even the superheroes are no exception. They know that Angel is very powerful, but no matter how powerful he is, can he really resist an interstellar battleship with his physical body? The battle is about to break out. Everyone looked to the sky nervously. Three angels versus the gluttonous army in the sky. The flaming sword in Angel's hand cut through the sky and easily broke through the light energy barrier that humans thought could not be broken. One after another, the Teoti frigates were shot down by Angel. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that Angel had the upper hand. Moi, use flame bombing. Angel chased away the Teoti frigate behind him, turned around and said to Angel Moi. Receive. 
The sword in Angel Moi's hand ignited with blazing flames. After Angel chased down the surrounding frigates and broke the light energy barrier of the Teodi main ship, the flame bombing was launched instantly. Boom! Another Teodi main ship was sunk on the horizon. Yes, countless people looked at the scene in front of them and cheered. At this moment, Angel seemed to be the god sent to them by God. Countless Christians began to kneel down and worship Angel. Angel will be their lifelong belief. Some people even swear that they will worship Angel for the rest of their lives. In a short period of time, even a nuclear bomb could not damage the Teodi main ship for a moment, and two ships were easily sunk by three angels. The originally invincible Teodi army seemed so fragile and vulnerable in front of Angel. The Teodi fleet seemed to have been fooled by Angel. For a while, he was fooled around by the angels and could not form an effective counterattack at all. Everything seems to be developing in a good direction. Tell me, what would it be like if the Teodi Legion used the Star Destroyer cannon to hit Angel? Dr. Banner, who had returned to his human form, couldn't help but asked curiously. Definitely, he did not mean to slander Angel, he just simply wanted to know, just like when you were a child and watched cartoons and wanted to know who is more powerful between the protagonists of two different animations. Go away, no crow mouth, Thor immediately stepped forward and kicked Banner. Ha ha, you don't have to worry. Teodi is an ordinary artillery fire. It can't hit the agile angel, let alone the star destroyer cannon with a very obvious forward swing. It's like hitting a mosquito with a nunchuck. Hit. Tony Stark explained to everyone from an academic point of view. Quote dot quote. Yes, Angel's individual combat ability is top-notch in the universe, and his flexibility is unique in the entire universe. How could the left-wing guard of the majestic and divine Kesha be hit by the main ship cannon of an aerospace-grade civilization? Thor also nodded in agreement. In the cosmic battlefield, as long as ten high-level angel guards can easily defeat all the combat power of an aerospace-level civilization. Not to mention that there are only seven Teodi main ships now. However, they all ignored that this was not a space battlefield, but the Earth. Angel can hide, but they can't hide. Oh, Banner, you have a crow's mouth, what do you think that is? Suddenly, Natasha Romanoff pointed at one of the Teodi battleships, which had begun to gather the energy of the Star Destroyer cannon. However, their goal is not Angel, but the good, good city on the ground. Tony Stark is sure that if one hit of the Star Destroyer cannon hits the Earth, it will definitely be enough to destroy a city. If they were really shot down by that Star Destroyer cannon, I'm afraid none of them would be able to survive. This power is no less powerful than a nuclear bomb. Sister Yan, what should we do? It is initially estimated that there are several million people on the ground. If Teodi's Star Destroyer cannon is fired, none of these people will be spared. Angel also noticed Teodi's actions. Banner, I hate you. It was your crow's mouth that killed us. Looking at the assembled Star Destroyer cannons, Tony Stark couldn't help but close his eyes in despair. It seemed that he was going to burn into ashes along with his beloved city. Everyone closed their eyes in despair. Boom. Teodi's Star Destroyer cannon has been fired, blasting straight towards the ground. Just when everyone was desperate, a bolt of lightning pierced the sky, blocking the gap between Teodi's Star Destroyer cannon and the city. Boom. Huge amounts of heat wave swept across the city, and the entire sky was rendered red by the heat wave. The Star Destroyer cannon fired by the Teodi main ship was blocked. Angel Yan used the flaming sword in his hand to block the Star Destroyer cannon fired by the Teodi main ship. Oh my god, what did I see? Countless people exclaimed in disbelief. The beautiful angel blocked the entire city with her body. Saved millions of lives. I realize that I really want to fall in love with Angel. Tony Stark murmured to himself as he looked at the sky. He felt as if he had met the love of his life. Wake up, you loser, why would Angel like you? Rogers said in shock, he felt that Angel would not belong to mortals. None of them are good enough for Angel. Anyone who sees the beautiful Angel will be moved. Even Natasha Romanoff, who is also a woman, will be attracted by Angel's beauty. You, I'm a rich, handsome man. I'm not a loser, Tony Stark retorted. Growing up, he, Tony Stark, was truly a rich, handsome man. There is never a girl he can't catch. Hash 043 but from Angel's point of view, you're not even a loser. 
Thor glanced back at Tony Stark and Rogers who were arguing, and was also shocked. Oh, okay, but I still have love. My heart, my everything. Tony Stark accepted Thor's words, but this did not mean that he would give up. He has decided that he must pursue Angel properly. If I really have an angel as my wife, I will have no regrets in this life. Waves of heat penetrated from Angelian's position against the Star Destroyer cannon. Even on the ground, Tony and others could feel the terrible heat wave. Under this heat wave, the temperature of the entire city has increased by several degrees Celsius. Countless people cheered as Angel Yan blocked the Star Destroyer cannon that could destroy the city. Teoti, obviously, is also waiting for this opportunity. One after another, the Teoti main ships lit up. And their common goal is Angel Yan. Boom, another scorching light pierced the sky and shot toward Angel Yan. Hum, Angel Yan groaned, and his body, BFDB, seemed to drop a little. But it stabilized immediately. Boom, boom, then three bright lights appeared in the sky. The energy shot straight towards Angel Yan. With each additional ray of light, Angel Yan's figure will drop a bit. In the end, the remaining five Teoti main ships all aimed the Star Destroyer cannons at Angel Chu. And Angel Yan's distance is already very close to the ground. The entire city was burned like an oven by the heat wave emitted by the Star Destroyer cannon. These aliens are so abominable. Come on Angel, hold on. Everyone on the ground couldn't help but sweat for Angel Yan. Even Tony Stark couldn't help but want to help Angel Yan. No, I need to help her. Iron Man had just taken off when he was stopped by Thor. What are you going to do? Hold me back, or send me to death? That's better than doing it here. Don't worry, that's the left-wing guard of Holy Kesha, how could it be hit so easily? Sister Yan, Sister Yan, in the sky, Angel chased Angel. Mo Yi also shouted anxiously, wanting to help Angel Yan. Call, don't worry about me, deal with the Teoti battleship first. Angel Yan exhaled and gave orders to Angel Chai and Angel Mua. Yes, Sister Yan, Chai Hao Mua is a warrior who has experienced hundreds of battles, and they naturally know that the best way to help Yan now is to deal with Teoti's main ship. I am. Dot the God of Thunder. Countless lightning lights lit up from Angel Yan's body. Rumble. The sky that was supposed to be sunny suddenly remembered thunder. Ah, Angel Yan's lightning bolts converged on Angel Yan's body. One after another flashes around Yan Yan. A huge amount of lightning penetrated the sky and the earth, and that light made even people far away in other places in the Western Hemisphere feel dazzling. At this moment, Angel Yan's body was bathed in thunder light, and the terrifying power of thunder burst out from Angel Yan's body, pushing back the five scorching star destroyer cannons inch by inch. The terrifying power of thunder has begun to erode the light of the star destroyer cannon. The beam of light emitted by the Star Destroyer cannon also began to be a little bit ruthless by Angel. The originally red flaming sword in Angel Yan's hand had been completely rendered white by the lightning. At this time, Angel Yan looks like a real goddess. And she is a female war goddess. Under the collision of energy, the buildings near Angel Yan's position began to disintegrate inch by inch. The terrifying gust of wind swept across the wasteland, making everyone unable to open their eyes. Oh my god, this is the real god. Rogers, standing next to Thor, couldn't help but sigh. Thor's face gradually darkened. Indeed, it feels like no matter where you look, Angel Yan looks more like Thor than himself. Thor couldn't help but feel ashamed. Rumble. The whole sky resounded with thunder again, but Thor knew that this matter had nothing to do with her at all. It was completely Angel Yan's personal show. We are all gods, I am Thor, you are the thundering god of war. Even if your name is more impressive than mine, your strength is so much better than mine. Thor feels a little autistic. Goddess, come on, Tony Stark next to him shouted again regardless of Thor's feelings. Thor's face couldn't help but darken even more. You know, Stark has never called himself a god. He said that would affect their relationship and create a gap between them, so he always called him the breaking point. Will calling her, Goddess Angel, in front of him unscrupulously like this really not affect the relationship between them? When everyone was watching Angel's battle in the sky with concentration, Loki came back again. He has worked with Thanos. Thanos said that if he didn't complete the task, he would have his head. So Loki quietly returned to the Tesseract. Boom. 
A ray of thunder shot up into the sky, mixed with the power to destroy everything, and dispersed all the Star Destroyer cannons of the five Teodi main ships. All the battleships in the sky were shaken left and right by the impact of huge amounts of energy waves. Even Teodi's battleship was shaken by the impact of huge amounts of energy. All shields failed at this moment. Angel is a warrior who has experienced hundreds of battles, so naturally he will not give up such a good opportunity. Angel chased Angel Moy, nodded to each other, and then rushed towards a Teodi main ship. Boom, boom, two more Teodi main ships were sunk. The lightning all over the sky suddenly gathered again and turned into two barrel thick thunder and lightning that bombarded down. Without the light energy barrier, the Teodi main ship naturally cannot stop Yan's thunder and lightning. The last gluttonous command ship saw that all the main ships were sunk and wanted to retreat as soon as, 640. As soon as it reached the edge of the wormhole, it discovered that the wormhole seemed to have been closed. Loki smiled sheepishly at this. Angel Yan aimed at the last Teodi main ship and raised the flaming sword in his hand. Bright light gathered in Yan's palm. Just a normal sweep. A huge file-sized slash came from Yan's sword blade. Carrying terrifying thunder and lightning energy that can tear everything apart, it cuts towards the Teodi main ship. The Teodi main ship, which had no retreat, was cut into pieces by Yan's final blow. Goddess hail, angel hail, countless people have begun to stand up and cheer. What's more, they started to kneel down and worship the angel in the sky. Even everyone in the Avengers couldn't help but thank Angel from the bottom of their hearts. Without Angel, it would be almost impossible to stop the alien invasion with the Earth alone. Although the Teodi main ship has been completely destroyed, there are still many miscellaneous soldiers scattered around New York City. Boom! A holy light penetrated the Earth. Countless lightnings fell from the sky, and in a moment, all the gluttons were torn into pieces. All battleships or sky carriers were swallowed up by lightning. In an instant, the entire city was cleansed. The sky regained its light again, and the sun illuminated the sky again. And Angel is the goddess who brings hope. At this moment, the whole world also realized the power of Angel. If nuclear bombs are ineffective against angels, I think just these three angels can conquer the entire Earth. Rogers is just a veteran of the United States. In his opinion, Chitori's technology is already very advanced, but it is nothing compared to Angel. Yeah, Rogers didn't expect that almost everyone around him nodded in agreement. Too strong, is this the strength of Angel? Thor said in disbelief. He felt that he and Angelian were not on the same level at all. Is this Angel, beautiful and powerful, spreading justice in this universe and helping the weak? Natasha Romanoff said yearningly. Even Gwen yearns for Angel's life. If it weren't for Brother Vegito, she would probably choose to become Angel without any hesitation. After solving all the Teodi, Angel Yan stood directly on the cloud. Mo Yi and Chai followed Yan half a body closely. Hello, humans of Earth. I am the right-wing angel guard of the King of Angels, the Holy Kesha, Angel Yan, the God of Thunder and War. On behalf of Angel, I extend a helping hand to the Earth. As long as the earth is under the order of justice and follows the order of justice, then it will be protected by Angel. Angelian's voice was not loud, but it spread throughout New York City. Sister Angel, I admire you. Angel will be my belief from now on. I will definitely spend the rest of my life believing in justice. Oh God, God, oh no, Angel, I love you. Angel Yan, you will be my goddess forever. Countless people shouted and among them, the craziest one turned out to be Tony Stark. Goddess Yan, ah, I love you, Tony Stark shouted shamelessly. As a result, his teammates subconsciously took a step away from him. They all said they didn't know him. But Tony Stark didn't care at all. After all, it was for the goddess Yan. So what if he was disliked? However, he has been used as a dog licker by others since he was a child. Tony Stark is still a little used to being a dog licker for the first time. But he soon fell in love with the feeling. It feels good to lick the dog for a while, and it feels good to keep licking the dog. As for licking dogs, they are not allowed to stay in the house. Does he, Tony Stark, seem like someone who needs a house? Therefore, Tony Stark unscrupulously indulged Angel's dog licking ranks. In fact, Stark has already thought about using the financial resources of the Stark group to build a huge amount of statue for Angel Yan. 
It is built on the top floor of Stark Corporation, so that the entire city of New York can see Angel's true appearance. Goddess, the goddess of my dreams. Countless survivors screamed, and everyone fell into ecstasy, but did not realize that a greater crisis was quietly coming. By the way, do you know why the wormhole just closed suddenly? Someone finally realized this serious problem. I don't know, it's because the Tesseract's energy has run out. Thor said casually, and then continued to fall into the carnival. Broken, Natasha Romanoff suddenly shouted, realizing what was happening. S.H.I.E.L.D. has done research on the Tesseract and concluded that the energy of the Tesseract is endless and almost impossible to use up. Natasha Romanoff anxiously shouted to the surrounding teammates. What, then why did he shut down suddenly? Someone must be operating the Tesseract. Loki, the whole thing is not difficult to solve. The Chidori who originally invaded the Earth were captured by the Teodi army due to the Tesseract incident. If Loki really has any cooperation with Chidori, he will naturally not give up easily. Sure enough, he didn't wait for everyone to finish speaking. A beam of light rose into the sky again. A wormhole door opened again in the Lord Chancellor of New York City. It's over. Tony Stark couldn't help but think of the endless Chidori in the universe. Such a dense army, even if it stands and lets you kill, can still tire you to the point of doubting your life. Don't worry. Chitori is not strong, and besides, we have Angel. Rogers activated his inspiring skills again. The superhero who originally vowed to rely on his own strength to defend the Earth suddenly thought of relying on 4.2 Angel at this moment. However, Rogers' words are very effective. Yes, compared with the Teodi army, the Chitori army is not that powerful. Even before Angel appeared, they were defeated by their Avengers. The only trouble is that there are just a little too many Chidori, and now they have more angels. It's no problem to deal with a mere Chidori. All superheroes thought with relief. The wormhole opened again, but this time it was not like last time. As soon as the wormhole opened, countless Chidori rushed out one after another. This time, only one battleship came out. There weren't even any frigates around. Seeing the warship slowly sailing out, Loki's eyelids twitched as he opened the wormhole. I originally thought that what I had just done was just Chidori's cannon fodder. But I didn't expect that that person actually came in person. Battleship, to be precise, what came out of the wormhole this time couldn't even be called a battleship. Totally a huge amount of floating meteorites. A floating throne floats quietly above. I saw that the person on the throne had purple skin, a giant vertical chin, a Hulk-like body shape, wearing blue and gold clothes with golden shoulder armor and golden short boots, and also wore a blue shirt with a gem on his forehead. Gold and gold helmet. On the floating meteorite under the throne, there were also five people standing. It is the Black Order, the five leaders of the Dark Order under Thanos. An extremely terrifying momentum enveloped the entire city with the appearance of Thanos. Thanos, looking at the figure emerging from the wormhole, Yan's pretty face couldn't help but turn cold. When she was dealing with Teodi, her energy had been almost exhausted, but now, a more difficult enemy appeared. The overlord of the universe, Mad Titan Thanos. Oh, Angel, Thanos looked at Angel with interest. At the same time, it was roughly guessed. A nuclear article 15 shows why it can withstand Chidori's attack. Seeing the appearance of Angel, then all this is not so strange. Some cannon fodder of the Dark Order are naturally no match for the world-famous Angel. Thanos, explain your purpose, even if the opponent is the overlord of the universe, Angel will not take a step back. This is faith. For justice, it is not a pity to die. You are no match for me. Thanos shook his head. After many years of fighting in the universe, he could tell at a glance that Angel Yan's condition was not as good as it seemed. Leave, for the sake of Holy Kesha, I won't kill you. Thanos said to Angelian again. As a last resort, he didn't want to offend a god king level powerhouse, especially when that god was Kesha. You are the one who should leave. Angelian raised the flaming sword in his hand and pointed it at Thanos. The voice Angel Yan communicated with Thanos was not that loud, but it still spread throughout the city. Yes, it's you who should leave. Get out of the earth. The earth does not welcome you aliens. Leave earth, alien monsters. Countless people clamored towards Thanos on the floating throne. After various battles, almost everyone believed that as long as Angel was still standing here, he would be able to protect them. 
Angel is so powerful, these alien monsters will definitely be no match for him. Angel, I give you one last warning. Leave or die. As for the mortals clamoring at him, Thanos doesn't care and won't care. God, why do you care about the comments of ants? All he needs to do is take away the infinite gems on the earth, and then randomly kill half of the people on the planet as usual. How can a soldier survive? There are only angels who die in battle, and there are no angels who run away. Angel Yan still stood in front of Thanos without giving an inch. That's very well said. I appreciate you very much. Thanos still said gently, not at all angry because Angel Yan refused to listen to dissuasion. Then, let me send you to see Lady Death. Lady Death will definitely like you. Thanos lowered his head, as if talking to Angelian, and also seemed to be talking to himself. Boom, a terrifying aura spread from Thanos. The Black Order next to him took the lead and wanted to capture Angel Yan, but was stopped by Angel Chai and Angel Mwa who were beside Angel Yan. Thanos also stood up from his floating throne, walking towards Angel Yan step by step. Looking at Thanos walking towards her step by step, Angelian felt great pressure. As the overlord of the universe, Thanos is definitely stronger than Angel Yan in terms of strength. If Yan was still in his prime, he could still have a fight with Thanos. But now, Yan's strength is at least 30% used. I just consumed too much energy. In order to block Teodi's Star Destroyer cannon, Yan wasted too much energy. If she were fighting in space, Teodi's Star Destroyer cannon would never be able to hit her. To deal with a fleet of Teodi's level, a capable emperor with many adverbs would never be wasted. Angel, are you really not afraid of death? Looking at Angel Yan with a firm face, Thanos couldn't help but asked curiously. He had seen countless scenes before death, but none of them were like Angel Yan. You know, anyone with a higher level can see that Angel Yan is at the end of his attack at this moment, and it is absolutely impossible to defeat him again. It is not a pity to die for justice. Raising the flaming sword in his hand, Wei made ten steps ahead and rushed towards Thanos. The flaming sword struck Thanos' fist, but it made a sound like metal collision. Ah, Angel Yan once again used all his strength to activate the remaining energy in his body. Yan's whole body began to be bathed in lightning light again. At this moment, Yan seemed to be transformed into thunder and lightning. Attacking Thanos at an extremely fast speed. So fast. The goddess is indeed invincible. She defeated the aliens. The humans on the ground cheered for Yan again. It seems that as long as the goddess is here, there are no aliens that cannot be defeated. Even the Avengers are sighing at how powerful Angel Yan is. This speed must have reached dozens of Mach. Tony Stark said in disbelief. You know, even with his steel armor, the current limit speed is only Mach 3. 537 inches is expected of a goddess. At the end, he did not forget to add. Faced with Yan's fierce attack, Thanos didn't panic at all. If it were Yan's heyday, he might need to find some other ways to resist the threat. But now, Angel Yan is just at the end of his strong attack. He only needs to defend patiently and wait for Angel Yan to be exhausted. High-intensity attacks place an extremely terrible load on the body, and once the body is overloaded, there will be behavior in which actions cannot keep up with consciousness and this kind of behavior is extremely dangerous when it occurs against the enemy. Especially, the opponent is the overlord of the universe, the mad titan Thanos. Boom, as Yan's movements slowed, Thanos grabbed Yan's flaming sword. Then, Thanos stepped forward and punched out. Boom, Angel Yan was punched out by Thanos. Yan, who was blasted out, crashed into a building. Instantly, the entire floor began to collapse. Goddess. Countless people looked at Yan nervously. Angel, who was invincible under everyone's influence, was defeated like this. He was defeated so easily by that purple sweet potato spirit. At this moment, they finally realized how powerful those aliens were. Angel Yan walked out of the ruins step by step. Her beautiful face was stained with dust, and blood overflowed from the corners of her mouth. However, she still stood in front of everyone resolutely. Thanos, Angel frowned. Facing this despairingly powerful man alone. Sister Yan. Angel chased Angel. Mwa threw away the Black Order and landed next to Yan. He stretched out his hands to support Yan. Let's go together. Angel Mwa shouted and rushed towards Mie first. Angel is chasing after him. 
As long as Thanos takes action to resist Moi, he will be greeted by Angel's thunderous attack. The cooperation between the two of them can be said to be perfect. However, facing them is one of the most powerful God King level masters in the universe. Within just a few moves, Angel chased Angel Moi, but Thanos caught the flaw. During the interval between the two attacks, Thanos stepped forward, chased Angel and flew away. Without Angel chasing and supporting him, how could Angel Moi be Thanos's opponent? After several fights, Thanos had already grabbed Moi's neck. I didn't want to be an enemy of Angel. Thanos said to Angel in front of him, and then began to exert slight force with his fingers. Oh, Moi struggled in Thanos's hands, trying to break free from Thanos's restraints. However, compared with Thanos, her power star is really too weak. Moi, even though there was no trace of energy left, Angelian couldn't just watch his comrades die in front of him while doing nothing. With Angel Yan's current state, it is almost impossible to have another fierce battle with Thanos. If you want to save Moi, there is only one way, and that is to risk your life. Angel Yan's body shone with lightning again. The speed has even become faster than before. And stronger. Stubborn. Thanos was also completely enraged. If it weren't for Kesha, the three angels in front of me would have died countless times. Since they are shameless, let them see that the dignity of a God King level powerhouse is inviolable. Roar. Thanos was angry, and he threw the angel Moi in his hand casually, and decided to teach these angels who knew nothing about heaven and earth a lesson. Angel Chase spread his wings and flew up, trying to catch Angel Moi who was thrown out. Thanos's power is too great, after catching Moi. Even Angel who was chasing him was knocked away. Boom, boom, boom. Several buildings were chased by Angel and Angel Moi crashed them down. But Mo Yi and Chai still didn't slow down at all. Instead, it hit the ground hard. Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. A huge amount of potholes were knocked out of the ground. Poof, Angel spit out a mouthful of blood. When she just caught Angel Moi, she subconsciously protected Moi in front of her. Therefore, most of the impact was borne by Chai. Huge amounts of impact force knocked down all the surrounding buildings. Thanos freed his hands and used his fists to strike Angel Yan's sword that had reached its peak of strength. Boom, terrifying air waves spread from the intersection between the sword blade and the fist edge, directly knocking down all the surrounding buildings. However, Yan did not stop, but started the next round of attack at a faster and more violent speed. But this time, Thanos did not just passively defend like last time, but began to take the initiative to fight head on. Bang, 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 the sound of metal clashing could be heard throughout New York. That's exactly what happened to Thanos. Angel, you will pay for your stupidity. That is your life. Angel Yan's attack became more and more fierce, and similarly, Mie's attack became more and more fierce. Angel will never regret his sacrifice for justice, even if it means his life. Angel Yan didn't take a step back and continued to attack Thanos, sprinting and slashing. As if he was tireless. Roar. As Thanos roared, Thanos' fist collided hard with the flaming sword in Angel Yan's hand again. Boom. Ding. The flaming sword in Angel Yan's hand was broken by Thanos with just a pair of fists. Angel Yan was already exhausted, and the breakage of his weapon would undoubtedly make things worse for Angel Yan now. Do it all at once second time tired, third time exhausted. As for Angel Yan, he has undoubtedly reached the point where he has given up on himself. Boom, Thanos' fist hit Angel Yan with unparalleled power. The terrifying power shook the world. Poof, Angel Yan spit out a mouthful of blood and fell from the sky like a meteor. Despair, endless despair enveloped this planet. Ebony Ma, you go and take the Tesseract and the Mind Scepter. As for the remaining people, Follow the old rules and randomly kill half of the people on this planet. Then we leave. Thanos did not lower his voice. At this moment, through the media in New York City, the entire Earth heard Thanos' words. During the battle between Thanos and Angel Yan, countless Chidori have come to Earth through wormholes. For a time, everyone fell into despair. Even such a powerful angel has been defeated, who else can protect them? Is the Earth really finished like this? Just when everyone fell into despair, a bright light pierced the sky and rushed into space towards Thanos on the ground. 
The terrifying fluctuations can be clearly perceived even from thousands of meters away. And this red light is the sky blade judgment launched by Angel Chase and Angel Moi together. Quote dot quote. Go to hell. Thanos. X2. Roar. He didn't cross his arms and put them above his head. Boom. The land under Thanos' feet has begun to show cracks like spider webs. The scorching air waves turned all the surrounding rubble into powder. Roar. Thanos roared angrily, trying to resist Angel's pursuit of Angel Moi's Sky Blade Judgment, but he was still pressed down by the Sky Blade Judgment inch by inch. The ground beneath Thanos' feet also began to sink inch by inch, forming a huge amount of hemispherical pit. Wang Chinhao, the roar like an explosion carried huge amounts of air waves, scattering all the surrounding buildings into ruins. The ground cracked like a spider web, and smoke and dust billowed up. The Sky Blade Judgment, carrying unparalleled power, pushed Thanos down inch by inch. The power of Sky Blade Judgment is so terrifying that even someone as powerful as Thanos is suppressed to the point where it is difficult to resist. Lord Thanos, go on. At this time, Loki's voice came. A glowing blue stone was thrown towards Thanos by Loki. It's the Tesseract. Thanos gritted his teeth and released an arm that was resisting the judgment of the Sky Blade. Reached out and caught the Tesseract. Roar. Thanos crushed the shell surrounding the space gem. He clenched the space gem in his hand. I, even destiny, Thanos roared. A ray of blue light shot up into the sky, blocking Angel's pursuit and Angel Moi's heavenly blade judgment. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.